If you don't teach people and show them from scripture, God has nothing to work with. Because the word of God is the vehicle upon which God can walk on the heart of men. Integrity is simply doing the right thing in the right way at the right time at all times. To succeed in ministry, I need the heart of a shepherd and the mind of a businessman because ministry is business. Yesterday, I just felt in my spirit that God wanted us to move and look at this. We'll be looking at the principles of biblical interpretation. We'll be looking at biblical exegesis. And somewhere in my spirit, I just felt we have done enough as at yesterday. That um, you need to now go and use all the things we have shared to go ahead and begin to produce. So I want to talk to you this morning about how to run a special or parachurch ministry. How to run a special or parachurch ministry. Because I felt in my spirit yesterday, God wanting us to look at this. Because there are a lot of people that have been coming since Monday, and most of the things we have been talking about seem to have to do with pastors and pastors and pastors and pastors. And there are people here that are not pastors. They are evangelists, they are music ministers, they are drama ministers, they are itinerant ministers. So um, I felt that God would want us to look at this so that we can be able to give um, a lot of ministers and church workers and young men and young women the opportunity to have direction with reference to how to run things going forward. So let's open to 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 3. From verse 5. Who then is Paul and who is Apollos but ministers by whom you believe? Even as the Lord gave to every man, I have planted Apollos water, but God gave the increase. So then, neither is he that planted anything, neither he that watereth but God that giveth the increase. Now, he that planted and he that watereth are one, and every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. For we are laborers together with God. You are God's husbandry, you are God's building. According to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another built it thereon. But let every man take heed how he builds. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Christ Jesus. Father, we thank you because you are a good God. We thank you because you are a faithful God. We thank you because you are an awesome God. This morning, as the book is being opened, open our eyes to see, open our ears to hear, open our heart to gain understanding, and let your name be glorified. Thank you, awesome God. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Can I hear a big, big, big amen? One of the challenges we have um, in Africa when it comes to ministry is the fact that in Africa, the most popular kind of ministry is church pastoring. So, majority of the time in Africa, we have elevated the pastoral ministry above all other ministries. So, whenever a man or a woman receives the call of God upon their life, the first thing they think of is to go and start a church. Because that is the only model of ministry that has become popular and common in our clime. However, 
you and I need to understand that when God calls you, God has not called everybody to be a pastor. As a matter of fact, the Bible says he gave gifts unto men, some to be apostles, prophets, teachers, pastors, and evangelists. And when you look at different parts of the scripture, you will also discover that there are different other gifts and ministry that are different from the fivefold ministry. You discover in the book of Romans that there are a lot of other things there in Romans chapter 12. So you need to understand as a Christian, as a leader, as a minister, that there is the need for us to really find out whether the ministry we are running and the way we are running it is the way it's supposed to be run. Because what we have happening today is that there are a lot of evangelists that are pastoring churches. There are a lot of people that are not supposed to be pastoring, but they are pastoring. And because they have gone into pastoring, it has affected them from being able to do the core thing that God has called them to do. And one of the reasons that I found out for this is the fact that a lot of churches and pastors do not understand kingdom concepts. So when people have a ministry that is not a church, they need the church to support them financially. But most churches don't give money to anybody except to themselves. So because of that, a lot of people that have a drama ministry, a music ministry, a TV ministry, a prison ministry, whatever, they find themselves having to start a church so that they too can have weekly offering. So that they can now use the money that comes from the church to now go and be doing what God has called them to do. But what they don't realize is that ministry and pastoring is a serious job. So they go to start a church thinking that when they start a church, they will now have money to do the ministry. And then when they enter church, they discover that church itself is a different ball game. And it's not as easy as that. So many evangelists are locked up in church pastoring with pain in their hearts because they know that they are supposed to be on the field but they are in the church so they feel in prison because that is not the call of God for their life many people have missed it in that area and it is very very important for us in this meeting to really ask ourselves as we are closing am I where I am supposed to be and am I doing it the way I am supposed to do it now, I believe that in this country and in this continent, we can have solid, vibrant, successful parachurch or special ministry if only we know how to run it effectively. There are people that I believe God has called to be teachers just to be a teacher to teach and carry their message to the body of christ to strengthen the body there are people that i believe god has called to be in the area of drama and we have some of them in this part of the world that have focused on drama ministry that has focused on music ministry that has focused but later on somewhere along the line they always end up entering church and if you sit down with them one-on-one -on -one, major reason why many of them start churches me too I need my own people so that I can get money I can get people to support me so that when I have to do a crusade I will have people to go with me when I need money at least we can raise money from the church to go and do it and at the end of the day many people will get to heaven and God will say you have a 10,000 member church but I called you to be a rural evangelist many people will get to heaven and God will say you have 17 branches but I called you to be a drama minister so what I want to do today is to help give you strategies that can help you succeed in a special ministry, in a parachurch ministry, so that everybody will not go into church. Because we have churches everywhere, every shop, every hotel, every complex, everywhere, shop, church, 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 church. And we are making little or no impacts. So many churches, no power. So many churches, no transformation. So many churches, and the country is getting worse. So let's begin by looking at definitions. When we talk about a special ministry or a parachurch ministry, what do we mean? 
So let me give you three dimensions that we can look at it from. Number one, a parachurch ministry is any ministry that is not a church but has something to do with the church. Any ministry that is not a church but has something to do with the church. So a parachurch ministry can be a drama ministry. It's not a church, but you set up a drama ministry or a drama group because you believe that God wants to use you in that area and you have your people and then you can go from church to church or be organizing drama stuff all over the country. Now listening and listening were many, many years ago in this country, we had the Ogundes and the... Uh, all these different uh, eh? Baba Salah and all these different drama groups that used to go as a team from village to village city to city doing shows 12 noon, 2 p.m., 6 p.m. and they go all over and then all of a sudden that nose dive we used to have a cinema culture where in Lagos you have hundreds of cinemas and then that culture died and now we are having the reemergence of the cinema culture as a result of Nollywood's explosion. But if you are sensitive in the spirit and you study moves, you will realize that a lot of people are tired of Nollywood. They are tired of the dirty cinemas and dirty movies and people are now calling for stage play. We are going back. People are calling for the original. Let's go back to stage performance. So really, if you really believe God is calling you, this is the time to begin to package yourself in a good way and begin to carry this because stage play is becoming the norm because people want to see professionalism. Olumide Imano, welcome you to Calvary Bible Church. Come for an impartation of wisdom. Every Sundays at 10 a.m. and every Wednesdays at 6 p.m. at End of Anjorin Street, Calvary Bus Stop, Idimu Ikotun Road, Idimu Lagos. It is happening in Calvary, the Calvary by the Church. <laughs> so, church ministry, can be a church ministry, can be a drama ministry, can be a music ministry. Nobody can deny what Mount Zion faith ministry has done in the body of Christ worldwide. Nobody can deny the impact of Mount Zion. And we have a lot of other people, Evom, Jawom, different people, but we need to go beyond that because if you look at most of the people in drama ministry today, the Mount Zion uncle, whether you like it or not, they are impactful, they are powerful, but they are becoming like old school. Are you getting what I'm saying now? And in order to reach out to the youth of today, they need to be another dimension. Either they have to rebrand, repackage, or come up with something that can get the heart of the youth. Because the youth of today, they are watching American movies. That by the time you present some of the things we are producing, it will look like boring stuff to them. And the youth are going to be lost if we don't do something. So I believe that God is really calling people to begin to see how we can take over the media, take over all these different mountains that the enemy is using to mess up our youth. So it can be a music ministry. It can be prison ministry. I'm telling you, there are millions of people in prison that ought not to be in prison. And when people come out of prison, hardly would they be rehabilitated. Some people go into prison innocent. They come out as criminals. You can have a ministry that caters for that group of people. So anybody that comes out of prison, they come to you, you rehabilitate them, and you begin to move from them. It can be a marriage ministry. There is no school of marriage. To be a lawyer, you go to school. To be a, to be a doctor, you go to school. But to marry, no school. So it can be a marriage ministry. And all you are doing is teaching people preparing people for marriage, helping them when they have marital problem, you counsel them, you do all kinds of stuff. That's a ministry. You don't need to have a church. That's enough. 
can be a children ministry, can be a teenage ministry. So a parachurch ministry is any ministry that is not a church but has connection to the church. It can be a magazine like we have Lifeway magazine. It can be a Christian magazine. It can be a Bible school. A theological school that you will set up to teach and train the pastors and the leaders of tomorrow so that the shallowness and the manipulation and the deception that we see in church today will be out of the question because if we continue the way we are going there is problem in the future for the church with all these dangerous pastors all around there is problem so that's the parachurch ministry a special ministry or parachurch ministry can also be an itinerant ministry and we have looked at that earlier where you are a teacher of the word of God or a preacher of the word of God or an apostle of God or an evangelist and then you carry what God has given you from place to place to strengthen churches to help build churches to help churches do what God has called them to do like the Ryan Bond case of this world hello also a special ministry can be an NGO can be an NGO that you set up now an NGO is a faith based non-profit organization so when I'm talking of NGO I'm not talking of NGO generally as in first lady of a state starting a pet project that's not what I'm talking about or most beautiful girl in Nigeria starting a pet project so that they can gather money and no 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 I'm talking of a faith based non-governmental organization that has to do with the transformation of life not just doing good works without eternity Are you getting that? So, how do you build and succeed running a special ministry or an itinerant ministry? Number one. The first step to running a special ministry and succeeding is you must be planted in a local church. And that's the foundational problem of many people. You must be planted in a local church. You cannot claim to be a minister and you don't have a church that you call your own. You say you are a music minister. You want to minister all over the world and you don't have a church. You don't have a pastor. The way God has arranged things, God has arranged things in such a way that the pastor or the local church becomes your base because if you are running a ministry a special ministry a power church ministry most likely you will not be doing it with your wife and children going with you everywhere so most likely you'll be the one doing it you are supposed to have a local church you are supposed to have a pastor over your life a covering over your life so that you are planted in that place so when you go to the field your wife and children have been taken care of when you return from the field you have a place you can come to where you can be empowered where you can be comforted before you can be sent forth again but the challenge we have is the fact that a lot of pastors do not even understand this so when a member of their church comes to them and say pastor god has called me before the man says what he is called to do the pastor has started manifesting because of insecurity because of identity crisis and that's why what we have today is a lot of laban bible church Laban ministries, insecure ministers of the gospel, immature ministers of the gospel that does not believe that God can call anybody except them. So when God called them, it is God. When God calls somebody else, it's doubted. But under normal circumstances, you are supposed to actually bring people to a place of maturity where they discover God for themselves and they discover the call of God for themselves. So it is supposed to be the responsibility of the local church to help grow you to discover your call, 
to support you to fulfill the call and to cover you to achieve the call. Hello? So as pastors, you also need to note that in this church, by the grace of God, we have tens, well over 20 or 30 ministries that has nothing to do with this church. Individuals that God has called. We have an evangelist here that has planted churches. Evangelist Osho, can you please stand? This wonderful man of God came into this ministry many years ago. Hallelujah. I have only planted few churches. This man has planted more churches than I have done. Why? Because that's his ministry. He came many years ago and he told me what God has called him to do. I said, oh, wonderful, no problem. When he went to do the first set of crusade and he wanted to start almost 14 churches or so, he said he wanted to hand it over to me. I said, no, I don't do branches, so I beg. And many churches they have started and he's here with his family as an evangelist. And when they are going to do their own ministry, we send them forth, we carry all your members following. There are people in this church that are part of his ministry to go and help him. They go, they return. God bless you, man of God. Pastor Oye Johnson, please stand. This man and his wife, well, they've been in ministry for many years. They are pastors. They pastor churches and then they move to Lagos. And God told them, don't do church. Focus on marriage ministry. Strengthening singles, strengthening marriages. And they came into this church. We are to say, ah, no problem. Ah, we don't have a problem. Oh, I better continue. We support them. They are doing program. We announce it. We share the ambulance church. We give them money to do their own ministry. God bless you, man of God. I can go on and on and on and on and on. Bishop is Bishop. Bishop is outside. He asked me. There are, there are many over thirty of them like that. So what am I going to be afraid of? That is the way it's supposed to be. So the first thing is you must have a local church. But guess what? If they did not come to submit themselves, go through the process, acknowledge that this is their house, I won't give them any money. Hello? Because I will not know their agenda. So if you are really called, go and say, look, I'm here, I'm a pastor or I'm a minister. Let people introduce yourself. Let them know there are people here that are pastors and they are members of this church. Some of them are pastor churches. They went into crisis. The church closed down. Some of them are struggling. They were frustrated. The church closed down and they decided, look, I know they do again. Let me come here and sit down and learn. And many people have come. They stay with us for three years, five years, and they go and start afresh. And we acknowledge them. Praise the name of Jesus. And when we do programs like this, they all come. People are here that God has called. They were members of this church and they call, God, then God called them and they say, oh, pastor, God has called me. I'm going. I want to go and start my own. And we say, oh, no problem. God bless you. Bye-bye. Hello. And today, when we are doing meetings like this, they all come. Now they are their own geo. Nobody is fighting anybody. I've seen many of them this week. Oh, how are you? I sure doing fine, fine. So you must have a local church where you are planted. Olumide Imano, welcome you to Calvary Bible Church. Come for an impartation of wisdom. Every Sundays at 10 a.m. and every Wednesdays at 6 p.m. at End of Anjorin Street, Calvary Bus Stop, Idimu Ikotun Road, Idimu Lagos. It is happening in Calvary. Charge free the vision. Talk Calvary by the church. <laughs>
I receive grace to walk in the path of righteousness. In Jesus' name, Amen. I hear the sound of abundance of rain. Thank you for watching. To order the complete message of this broadcast, please call the numbers on your screen. And partake of it. Everybody. Or visit our website, Facebook and Twitter accounts. Yeah.